Hey there, how's it going? So it's 2021 and you're just starting to play Diablo 3. Or maybe you've been eyeing the game and you want to make sure that you get ahead, catch up to everyone else. Well, you're in luck because today in this video, I'm going to take all of the juicy information that you need to know, everything, all the best tips and tricks to make sure that you get ahead in Diablo 3 and put it into one video. Let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Captain Nemo. Welcome to another Diablo 3 video. Today, we're doing that exciting stuff. We're talking about all those tips and tricks that you need to make sure that you're successful in Diablo 3. Remember, this video is chaptered, so you can skip around anytime you like via those chapters below. While you're down there, smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and stay tuned for the latest Diablo 3 content, guides, information, Diablo 4, and Diablo Mortal, that's right. I host the Immortal Podcast with my friend Echo Gaming. Awesome show. I will link the first episode for you up top. If you want to check that out, really cool. Make sure you do. So let's get started. What is the first tip that we're going to get started with? What is the first thing that you need to know when you get started with Diablo 3? All right. So first and foremost, you pick a class. There are seven different classes in Diablo if you buy the Necromancer expansion. So seven different classes, lots of story and backstory. You'll learn as you play the game. You can also learn more about these characters if you just Google it. There's lots of information about it. But we're going to concentrate on just high level things. You jump in, you don't know what which one to pick. Well, it depends what kind of play style you like. So if you're more of a player that likes to be in the front, likes to use hack and slash melee weapons like swords, knives and you know axes, you like to be the tip of the spear, so to speak, jump in there and blast and smash demons. You're most likely going to want to be like a barbarian or a monk or a crusader. Crusader is, is, is a tanky person as well, but more of a hybrid. Now, if you'd like to be someone in the back, someone who casts spells and just damages from, from distance, a DPS type of a character, then you're most likely going to want to pick a demon hunter or a wizard, a witch doctor and a necromancer or kind of a hybrid as well. But they also cast and throw stuff and all that good stuff. So that's what you're going to want to do. Those are the characters. That's kind of how you're going to roll with it. Pick which one you like, but don't worry. You're going to create more. It's really easy. Not going to, you know, it's not going to be really that bad. As you play the game, you're going to have multiple characters. I think I have all of my slots pretty much almost filled with multiple characters, multiple builds. It's kind of a lot of fun. Don't worry. Pick the one that's kind of built for your play style and let's move on. And last thing, there's three different types of characters. You have a regular character, a seasonal character, and a hardcore character. Let me explain. The seasonal character is basically the same as a regular character, but you're able to play during the current season. In Diablo, there's something called seasons. So when you jump into the game, when you first start playing it, if you play, if you create a seasonal character, you can basically participate in the challenges for that season. And there's a whole bunch of different rewards. You get really cool special sets. You get a bunch of stuff and the only way to get it is to complete challenges in that season. Now, if you haven't played Diablo, if this is your first time playing Diablo, it's a good idea to create a seasonal character because as you're playing the game, you're going to complete those challenges anyway, and you're just going to get your rewards. If you already played Diablo, a seasonal character is really good because as you start playing, it's going to be just a lot of fun and you're going to be able to complete those challenges and get an extra cool set for yourself. Edric's Gift. We'll talk about that a little, a little later. As you complete the first four chapters of the season, you get a Hadrick's Gift. That's a complete set, six piece set for your character. It's really, really cool. You want to do that. Now, at the end of the season, your seasonal character becomes a regular character and you're good to go. You don't have to worry. You're not going to lose anything. So it makes 100% sense to create a seasonal character for your first one because you're going to be able to participate and get those challenges. So don't worry, do that. There's one caveat. A seasonal character cannot play with the non-seasonal character. So if you have a Diablo friend that does not have a seasonal character for that season and you create a seasonal one, you're not going to be able to play together. So if you want to play with somebody, make sure they have a seasonal character with them as well. And remember, at the end of the season, that character becomes a regular one, moves into your stash. Don't worry, you're not going to lose them. Now, a hardcore character is someone that you can lose. If you create a hardcore character, it's like a real life character. So in other words, if you create a hardcore character, whenever you die in the game, anytime at all, if you're just walking down and you forget and you spill a drink and you know, something happens and you die, that's it. You're dead. All of the progress in the game, you could, you know, like you spent four months playing 
and then you die one time in a rift, it's over. That's it. You lose all your progress, all your gear, everything. So if you're going to be picking a hardcore character, you bet you got to know what you're doing. You got to be a hardcore player. Be careful. There's a disclaimer with that. You will lose everything if you die one time on a hardcore character. So pick which one you want and let's load into the game. Now let's talk modes and difficulty settings. In Diablo, there's three different modes. You have a campaign mode, adventure mode, and a challenge rift. Campaign mode is like your first player's story. Basically, when you beat it, you learn about the story. In Diablo 3, you learn about the characters, what's going on, the whole thing. It's really, really awesome. And if you've never played Diablo, you want to make sure that you, of course, beat all five acts in the story. Also, if you've never played, when you beat it, you unlock adventure mode. There's a way to skip that too. If you didn't want to unlock adventure mode for the first time, which I highly suggest you actually beat the story and do, you could also start in a, when you start in a seasonal character, you're allowed to skip campaign and just go straight to adventure. But in general, you want to make sure that you beat campaign mode, beat all the five campaign acts, because it will take you to all the places that you kind of need to know in Diablo. Once you do, you will unlock adventure and you can jump in there. In adventure, you get to enjoy all kinds of end game activities. Things that you get to do with your friends, by yourself, a lot of cool stuff, we'll talk about that. But your regular campaign mode will take your character from level 1 to probably about 50s or 60s. Max level for your character is 70 and your end game will get you there. Don't worry, we'll get there. I actually have a full leveling guide, step by step, how the fastest way to level. When you jump into that and when you start getting ready to level, I'll link the guide for you. You want to make sure you check that out. Okay, so campaign adventure, got it. What's a challenge rift? Challenge rift is actually pretty simple. It's end game content without you having to grind for it. Think of it this way. Everybody jumps in and they play the same character that's geared the same way in the same rift. And the idea is to jump in, beat a whole bunch of things, destroy the boss, be able to do it, which gives you a whole bunch of rewards, and be able to do it in the fastest way, which puts you on a leaderboard. And there's a global leaderboard. And everybody, of course, tries to be on the top. You can only do this once a week and a challenge rift changes every season. Like I said, you get rewards. It's really cool if, and you want to make sure you do it. If you're having trouble beating a challenge rift or learning more about it, just YouTube what is a challenge rift or YouTube how to beat the current challenge rift and you'll be able to do it. It's a lot of rewards, a lot of fun and a way for you to play a character without having to kind of grind for it. Good way to test things and kind of learn things about the game. Challenge drifts are really cool. Now in Diablo 3, there's a whole bunch of difficulty settings. As you can see, one thing to keep in mind, it isn't really a skill based. In other words, you know how you normally play a game and you jump in, you say, oh, I'm playing Call of Duty and you can play on easy, normal or hard. And, you know, you play depending on your skill level. In here, it's a little bit more complicated than that. The highest difficulty levels are really about what kind of gear you have, how well you geared the level of your character more really than about the skill. So it doesn't matter how, how good you are, if you don't have the gear, you're not going to be able to make it at the higher levels. So And it's going to get pretty frustrating. So the idea is you kind of play the game and if you're getting smoked all the time, if you can't kind of like move on, if you can't, if you're spending too much time, it's going to make you not as efficient. And the key to this is if that's the case, you want to lower the difficulty a little bit. If it's too easy and you're just running and one-shotting everything, then you might want to turn up the difficulty because you'll get better gear, you get better things. Generally speaking, don't worry about it too much. Start a normal difficulty, play it, you know, when you get to 20s, turn it up to hard, see how that goes. And then check out my leveling guide because it kind of gives you more information about difficulties, how you can turn them up. But don't be a hero. Don't put on tournament 16 at start and thinking that you're going to be a boss. Just get in there and roll stuff. Not going to happen. Now you jumped into the game, you're playing, and there's a whole bunch of gear or weapons. You're like, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, it's actually quite simple. Every piece, every body part on your character, you can dress in a bunch of different gear. That gear comes in a bunch of different quality levels. The higher the quality level of the gear, the more stats it has, the stronger it makes you, and the more bonuses it gives you. The highest levels of gear, like something that's a legendary piece or higher, will give you even cooler bonuses and really nice things that you might want to keep. So generally speaking, as you're playing the game, and when you're playing in campaign, when you before level 70, before you max out, you're going to get a bunch of gear. Generally speaking, you just want to kind of wear the highest level gear that you have. Just take the rest and kind of destroy it for material and wait until you get to the end level when you get some really awesome pieces before you really start worrying about it. 
Generally speaking, you have regular gear that's in a normal no color. That's your just regular junk. And you have blue gear that's better than regular gear. Then you have yellow gear, which is better than blue. Then you have orange. That's the legendary pieces that I was telling you about. Those you want to keep most of the time. Then in the legendary, there's actually a couple of different subcategories. There's a regular legendary, and then there's one with like a gold outline around it. The gold outline is an ancient legendary piece. That's basically a legendary with just better statistics. That's all it is. Legendary with better statistics. Think of it that way. And then there's also an primal legendary, and that's a legendary with the red outline around it. That's the best possible gear you can get. So if you want to say, you know, what is the best gear that you can get? You want the ones with the red outline around it. There's also green gear. Green gear is a set gear, seasonal set gear. That's a set. What's a set? Basically, a set gives you a bonus of wearing X amount of pieces. There's six pieces in a set. If you wear two of them, you get a specific bonus. When you wear four of them or three of them, you get a specific bonus. And when you wear all six of them, you get all the bonuses for the gear. When you hover over a green, you will see when they light up. And of course, if you want to light them all up, you'll have to wear all of the pieces. You have to find all the pieces first in your regular or the ancient with the gold around it. There's a lot of different gear possibilities. Just remember that's kind of your settings. As you keep moving higher and higher, you'll get better and better gear. But at first, you just want to kind of wear the highest gear that you have. Now, certain gear and weapons will have a gem slots. They're called sockets. There'll be one, two or three sockets that you can put gems into. You'll find gems as you beat a whole bunch of different bosses that will drop these. You'll pick them up and as you collect them, you will combine them into better gems and stick them into weapons and armor and a bunch of stuff. There are a whole bunch of different colors take a look at them. I'm not going to bore you too much with them, but just remember a gem will give you a specific st statistics buff to the gear. So if you put a gem into your helmet, you will get a certain statistics buff. But if you take a gem and put it into a something like a sword or some sort of a weapon, you'll get a different buff and different color gems affect different buffs. Basically, it's a way for you to make your weapon statistics just a little bit better. Fine tune them to the way you like, depending on how the level of the gem, the color of the gem, and whether you stick it into an armor or a weapon piece. So just take a look at the gems and take a look at how they affect your weapons as you do it. You can really play around a lot of different flexibility. And now on top of those, there's also something called legendary gems. Legendary gems are just like regular gems, but they also give you special abilities. They're like the legendary pieces, armor pieces that you see. They give you like cool other additional statistics and bonuses. That's what legendary gems are. Legendary gems can only be put into rings and amulets. So in general, you can only have two rings and one amulet on you. So you can carry, you can put three legendary gems on you as well. Now with legendary gems, you actually get to upgrade them when you play greater rifts. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Legendary gems have levels on them. Regular gems just get combined together into better, bigger gems. And where would you do all this combination, all this stuff? Well, there are a whole bunch of uh, merchants around. That's right. You can find a bunch of merchants to do these types of things. So gem stuff is done in an artisan. If you go to artisan, you could take gems out of sockets. You could put gems in, you can combine gems. You could do a whole bunch of stuff with gems and all of that at the artisan. And remember, you'd have to upgrade the artisan to a level 12, which is max level, train them as they get you so they can have more and more skill, more and more things to do. And that's where you would take care of all your gems. Now, when you visit the blacksmith, you're able to basically forge all kinds of weapons, armor, you're able to salvage things. You're able to repair your armor and gear, a lot of different stuff that you could do with the blacksmith. But remember, also upgrade them to level 12, just like you did for your artisan. Now, when you visit the mystic, you're able to change a whole bunch of stuff in your gear. You can change the way things look like armor pieces and weapons. You could also reroll specific statistics on those weapons. There's a lot of stuff a mystic can do. Like if you get a weapon, there's a random rolls into a certain stat that you don't like. You love the weapon, you love everything about it, but there's just one statistic that doesn't really do something for you. You just need to change it. Well, with the Mystic, you can do that. You can change a specific statistic on a weapon. You can re-roll things. There's a lot of really mystical things that you can do. Make sure you upgrade her to level 12 and check it out. She's really, very cool. 
Now, another thing that you can do is visit um, this regular merchants around that will sell you things. We'll sell you rings, amulets, regular gear, things like that. They're not generally as useful. Although at level four and seven, you're going to want to buy a ring and an amulet from them. I talk about that in my leveling guide. But other than that, I don't mess with them too much. You can sell them things for gold when you find stuff around. But normally I like to salvage it for material. Now, the last vendor is Kadala. She's very important. Kadala will allow you to gamble. You, you, you find blood shards in the game by doing a bunch of variety of different activities, rifts, greater rifts, things like that. You can take these blood shards, trade them in and gamble for items, for pieces from Kadala. So she might get you a regular yellow piece or she might get you a really awesome legendary piece. It's all random. You don't know and you have to spend the blood shards to find out. You're going to be visiting her a lot using those blood shards. That's Kadala. So as you're playing the game, Act 3, Ruins of Sesheron, you're going to find something called the Kanai's Cube. It's a powerful tool that you're going to be using for the rest of the game. It's really amazing. I made a whole guide on Kanai's Cube. I'll link it up top. But generally speaking, what is the Kanai's Cube? You find it, you bring it back with you. And this cube gives you magical powers. It allows you to do a bunch of different things. Like it allows you to extract legendary powers from items. It allows you to take a yellow, a rare, and upgrade it to a legendary. It allows you to take legendary stats and re-roll them into other things. It also, it also, and this is the most important part for you, things that you need to know about. It gives you three passive stats that you can add to your character and fine tune even more. So why do you need it? Because it's three extra passive stats that you can have right now, as soon as you get the Kanai's Cube and have all the ingredients. We'll talk about that. So you get this Kanai's Cube. Three slots. What does that mean? Well, let's say you have some legendary piece of gear. You're looking at this gear and you like it because it has this really cool stat. It, it spawns, a, you know, it spawns a, a, a herd of cows. It spawns a herd of murderous cows that chill alongside of you and fight. Cool stat. Hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. Now, you don't want to wear this piece because, well, you're wearing something else that's better, right? Well, that's where can I cube comes in. It allows you to take one ring piece, one armor piece, and one weapon piece, stick it into the cube, take its power, and add it to your car, to your character permanently. You take a look at that. What it can do? Of course, you have to make sure that you have all these other things. You put them, them. You put you know your your piece in there. You fill it with all the rest of the material. You hit the button, and then you have this stat that's always there with you. You can put a whole bunch of different things into this cube and then choose. You have three slots, designated slots, and those slots can be filled with those cool statistics that, again, are going to give you a cool little extra stuff that you might not normally be able to get because you have other gear that you have to wear for the character. Really cool. That's one of the most important things about the Kanai's Cube for a beginner player to know that. So get it, get the cube, bring it back, get the coolest pieces of gear, legendaries that you find, Stash them aside and then stick them in a cube and get them to be your permanent stats. Pretty sweet. So you're big balling. You beat the campaign. You're like level 55 or 60. You got legendary gems, three slots in the cube, whole bunch of gear. You say, I'm, I'm boss, Nemo. What do we do next? Well, we're going to adventure mode. When we're going to adventure mode, that will get us to level 70 and it'll get us into that end game. All of the cool things that we want to do. What are we doing in there? Well, one thing that we're going to need to do, for example, is bounties. Bounties will get you a whole bunch of gear. They reset every so often, and they're also part of your seasonal journey. In every act, there's five bounties. When you complete all five, they're pretty easy. You could just run them yourself. When you complete all five, you get a chest. This chest, a whole bunch of goodies. You're going to want to continually do that. One tip for you, when you're doing the bounties, if you're in a party, whoever is doing them, the entire party gets the, gets the benefit, so to speak. So the best thing to do is jump in with a bunch of your friends, have you split up, do all the bounties, it'll just be quicker. But you're going to need to continually do bounties as they reset and you will need to do them every time you run a season because they are part of your seasonal journey. Another end game activity is something called a rift. When you jump into a rift, there's going to be waves and waves of enemies that are going to be coming after you. Some of those enemies are going to be super tough. We refer to them as elites. When you beat an elite, they will drop tokens. These tokens, when you pick them up, will fill up a bar. When the bar gets all the way to the end, a Rift Guardian comes out. That's the end boss. When you beat the Rift Guardian, you get a whole bunch of things. You actually get a whole bunch of things as you're playing this Rift. 
the enemies will drop gear they will drop gems and they will drop a whole bunch of material there's going to be chests and things like that this is a great way to farm for material for gear and things like that a rift and difficulty of the rift depends on the difficulty of your game so the higher the difficulty of the game the more difficult the rift is going to be but you'll probably get better things as they you know as they get dropped that's what happens in the rift when you beat the rift and you beat the rift guardian you get tokens these tokens you can use to enter a greater rift what's a greater rift a greater rift is basically just like a rift but much more difficult you set the actual difficulty level yourself when you enter it you have to use the tokens that you get when you beat the regular rift and when you get in there it's timed so you're gonna have to make sure the jump in is much harder there's more enemies they're stronger and but when you get to the end when you beat the rift guardian or the greater rift guardian a you get a lot more things there's a lot more stuff that gets dropped it's all higher level stuff as well it's more of an end game activity and you also this is the only place where you're able to upgrade your legendary gems remember how i told you uh, a regular gem you can combine at the artisan and get into a bigger gem that you put into your weapon and into your armor a legendary gem that you put into your rings and your amulet the only way to make them better is to play a greater rift to beat it if you don't die at all you get three plus one chance and here you can upgrade your legendary gem to a higher and higher piece you'll see a number the higher the number the better the gem is of course the remember if you can as you get higher and higher into the gems the only way to be able to actually upgrade them is to play really high level rifts because the chance of the upgrade goes down depending on your level versus the level of the greater rift long story short as you're playing the game you're going to have to continually up the level of the greater rift in order to upgrade high level gems but the higher the gem the better the stat for it is but this is the only place that you can be able to upgrade it so a greater rift is a high-end high level end game type of activity where you're going to be running these and getting trying to get a whole bunch of really awesome legendary gear and a whole bunch of other things and of course upgrading your gems to higher levels at the rift you're going to be farming for materials mostly and those greater rift tokens that's kind of the two end game activities when we're talking about rifts and greater rifts one final thing we're going to talk about is the paragon system now once you get to level 70 that's the max you can't get any higher so your stats stop there but wait, do they? Because the Paragon system allows you to continually upgrade and add to the passive stats of your character as you go higher and higher in Paragon. So once you get to 70 and you continually start moving up, the next level is just going to say Paragon 1, Paragon 2, Paragon 3. Par you'll see the 70, but you'll also see a Paragon. Every, the higher you go in Paragon, the more points you get that you can allocate and up and buff specific passive stats in your character. Stats like attack speed, cooldowns, movements, and so on. It's all done in the Paragon system and it continually moves up. It's a really cool way to kind of keep going even though when you get to max. So you're gonna to wanna to do that. There's a lot of different stats. Take a look at them and see how you can kind of add more and more and more to them to make yourself better and better in whatever type of style that you like to play with. Ooh, that was a lot. I hope you are still awake and your brain is still here with me. That was a lot of information. But remember, this is everything that you need to know about Diablo 3. You are ready right now. You're ready to go. you got all this information in your head. You're ready to go slay demons, destroy everything, get to the highest Paragon levels, and be an absolute boss in Diablo 3. Remember, if you have any questions, sound off below. I answer every comment. You can check me out on my Discord, my Twitter. Thanks so much for watching this video. Remember, you're going to want to make sure you check out my leveling guide, how to level for Diablo. I will put that for you up top because you're going to need that. Again, thanks so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one.